Hi CryptoDevs, Liarco here, and in this video about the ERC721 collection project from the Ashlips lab, I'm gonna show you how to customize the look and feel of your dApp in order to match your collection style. Let's get into it. This tutorial will cover different levels of customization, so starting from artists who may have less development experience, up to web designers or front-end developers, I would like to take all of you with me in this journey around the dApp code. Listen carefully, this doesn't mean that anyone will end up getting the same results. Lack of experience and years of dedication to a job cannot be filled by a 10-minute video. But stay with me till the end and you might find out that achieving good results is easier than you may think. So here is our project. I'm using version 2.3.0, which was developed while I was working on this video. So make sure you're using that version or higher in order to take advantage of all the features that I'm about to show you. Let's start by running the dev server. I make sure I'm in the minting dev folder. And then I run yarn dev dash server. And as soon as the build is successful, I can open the page on the browser. And here it is. This is the default minting dApp. Now I would like to adapt the style to the Sketchy Ape Book Club collection, so I prepared some assets for a background, a logo, and also a token for the preview. Let's start by adding the background to the images folder. Since version 2.2.0, I added a couple of example CSS rules that show you how to add a background image to the page. You can find them inside the general.scss file, inside the styles block for the body element. I have to comment the line above and uncomment the two here. And I'm also gonna change the file extension since my image is a PNG instead of a JPEG file. Let's save this file and boom! Here we have the new background. The project is using SCSS and Tailwind by default, so we can use plain CSS properties, SCSS code, or even Tailwind classes using the apply statement. In this case, I would like to have a slightly darker background, so let's decrease the brightness with a backdrop filter. I'm gonna try 0.5, and maybe 0.4, is the sweet spot in this case. Of course, you can also use Tailwind classes directly in the HTML markup. The reason why I'm not doing this is simple. If you are an experienced front-end developer, you can do some extreme customizations here. By using Tailwind inside the SCSS file, I made it really easy to reset the styles and start from scratch. Let me show what I mean. If I open the main.scss file and I comment out these two import statements here, the dApp will be completely flat. And from the inspector, you can also see that the markup is extremely clear and simple. Having the classes set into the markup would make it really painful to reset the styles like this. And soon I'm gonna show you an example of how flexible this thing can be. Now I revert these changes and we can get back to our customization. We set our background. Now let's replace the logo. This new logo here has completely different dimensions, so I can apply some styles to make it fit properly. I can set a smaller max width using Tailwind classes. And if it's not enough, I can also use plain CSS properties. I'm gonna connect my wallet because there is something inside the dApp which I want to change as well. And it's the preview token. So here I'm gonna rename this old preview because we're gonna use it later. And I'm gonna copy the new file, which is a sketchy hype. The image is perfectly squared, so there are no rounded corners. Let's round it a bit using CSS. I can go to the mintingdap.scss file and search for .preview, which is the class used by the preview image. 
and here we can simply apply the rounded class from Tailwind. The default one is not enough in my opinion, so let's try the medium one. That looks better. And I also would like to make it explicit that this is not the actual token. In fact, this is just a preview. Let's desaturate it. I would also like to change colors with something that can fit the jungle theme better. The best way to do this kind of changes is by opening the Tailwind configuration file and changing the colors there. In this section of the video I'm gonna improvise completely because I want you to know what can be achieved just by playing around with some colors here. Ok, so here we have some default colors. You can see that they are divided in sections, so we have a general section, inputs, whitelist proof widget and mint widget. So first of all, if we take a look at the DAP, we see that there is this indigo color, which is the primary one. It's used a lot. So let's take a look at it. And here it is, indigo. These and all the other colors you can find in the colors variable are the ones from the Tailwind framework. On their documentation, you can find all the colors which are available by default and all the different shades. You can see, for example, that the indigo color has all the shades from 50 to 900. And that's the same for all the colors except for the basic ones like white or black. So let's find something that I like for this project. Probably yellow. Let's try it out. I search indigo and I replace it yellow. I save it and we can go back to the depth and everything is now yellowish. Also, I don't like the white background too much with this because I would like to have uh, probably a dark theme in this depth. So let's try to change it. In the general section we see this pop-ups configuration and the background is set to white. Let's try out slate 800 and the text should be probably 50 which is almost white. Okay, so this is much darker now. But I don't like it very much. Let's try something which is less bluish. We can take a look at here and the stone one might be the right one. So let's replace slate everywhere with stone. And yeah, I probably like it more. Let's try a lighter shade. And maybe we can go to our background and lower the brightness. And with a lower brightness we have more contrast, so it works better. So now let's change these borders here. We can try out the Stone 800, which seems fine. Let's see if something lighter works better. Oh, this is the same as the background, so... Okay, that's not bad. Let's try 500. 500 looks good. So now, I would like to change the text here and make it darker. So, in order to do that, we can go to the buttons and the bottom primary as some text color here we can use the same stone color and maybe use something like 800. I'm gonna do the same for the hover version.
and yeah, this is fine for this example. Also, I would like to change these buttons here, which are the default ones, and I want them to be dark as well. So here are the normal buttons. So I can change the background and make it stone 800, maybe. And for the over version, I'm gonna go for 900. And of course the text must be lighter. So let's try uh, maybe 50. I'm gonna do the same for both the standard one and the over one. Okay, maybe this is too much. So let's try 700 and 800. That's the same as the main background. It seems to work better. Another interesting feature is that you can use plain RGB colors here. So for example, if I set the pop-up text color here and I want to set it to maybe something red, so this is a complete red. Here you can see this is absolutely unreadable, but it works. So you can use your custom colors here. If you already have your RGB values for your brand, you can customize that without using the Tailwind's default colors. So this was a quick run and we didn't even change the colors in the first page. So maybe there will be something broken there. But I just wanted to show you a quick example of how you can customize the dev colors completely just by using the Tailwind configuration file in a very few lines of code. But I also told you about another example that I prepared for you. And these are two custom themes that I created by changing the SCSS code instead of the Tailwind configuration. I created a gist on GitHub for this, so I'm gonna leave the link in the description with all the instructions on how to use it. But it's pretty simple. We just have a couple of assets and also two SCSS files with all the styles in them. So let's see how we can use them. I already downloaded all the files, so I can simply close some files here and I'm gonna need the old preview token and now I'm gonna copy the files here so first of all I'm gonna copy the two images folders the themes are called forest and pixel so I have two folders one with the background and with the logo for the forest theme and the other one has just a logo for the pixel version. The CSS files must go into the components folder so I'm gonna take them and copy them here. Of course they are not gonna work out of the box I have to import them so I'm just gonna command these two lines here and I'm gonna create a new one for our theme. As you can see from the code, I decided to create all the styles in one single file. So you have this section here, which is the same as the general.scss file. And then you have another section, which is the mintingdep.scss file. So we just have to import one single file for each theme. This is forest theme. I can save it. And if we go here, everything has changed. And here it is. You see, we have complete different colors. We have some transparency here. And also behind the pop-ups. It's probably hard to tell from the video, but we also have some gradients on the buttons here. Let's try the pixel one. And here it is. A completely different theme. Just by changing the SCSS file. 
I didn't change anything in the HTML code. In fact, we just touched some SCSS files, some assets, or the Tailwind configuration at most. And this is the point. Of course, I know that every project has its own requirements, so if you can rely on experienced designers or developers, there is much more that they will be able to do with this. But if your project is valuable, then you won't need tons of bells and whistles to make people mint your tokens. Unless you're running a rug pool, of course. But that's not your case, right? And that's all for this video, can't wait to see some great designs coming from your collections. And if you have any questions or anything you would like to see in the next videos, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and bye!